Copper Bartoli stage one. What is very interesting, 2.1. A lot of World Tour teams here. Very hard parkour, up and down all day. No maybe massive names, but EF have a decent squad here. Yumbo have a decent squad as well. Stan Amitta, Archie Ryan, uh, Paul Doubles here as well for Pulti Cometa. So pretty good team. Anyway, today's stage, mildly lumpy, not too hilly. Finish downhill, then flat. So wood should be one for the sprinters. TDT are here. They've got Cedric, they've got Charles Page, and they've got Tupalik as well. So a decent squad. Again, but no one crazy. UAE have like their standard Hershey, everyone else classic. Send it to the Italian point ones to try and point farm. So yeah, basically a strong team. Anyway, you can see Tudor doing a lot of stuff. Tudor look like they've really grown up a lot this year. Seem to have really made some big progress. Obviously got their first World Tour win with other decline, but the whole team's kind of going, get, seems to be stronger than it used to be. And there's also the interesting team is GW Sh uh, Shimano from Colombia. They've got the Colombian national champ here, uh, who obviously had a good tour down, uh, sorry, did, good tour of Colombia. Uh, but what we really want to watch here is on this downhill is Yumbo. Yumbo start to push it on. Stan Amitta is fast from a reduced sprint. And yeah, they're, they're obviously going pretty hard on, the, on this downhill part, trying to really strain it out as much as possible. And basically, it looks like they have a small gap. Uh, and then Marco Brenner goes, we're just going to take big risk. And he goes around the, the Visma Lisa bike rider. I always get them confused. I will get to Visma Lisa bike at some point. And the camera pans back and he's suddenly attacking. And everyone is like, oh, OK, we should probably follow this. And his, this cornering is some of the most aggressive cornering you really see in a bike race. People don't normally ride descents full because there's just no need. But with the 4K to go, it's like maybe 500 meters of flat road. Marco Brenner is taking big risks. You can see he's fully aeroed up. He's got the aero bra and like the angles he's leaning, how far out he's coming with the corner is really, really impressive because normally people don't go like tape to tape, like the full the full width of the road. But here he's pushing the limit as much as possible. Uh, people are chasing behind, but it's just so hard to actually have a, a good chase on a descent like this because you can't swap off, obviously. It's really mano a mano. And if someone can just out corner you, it doesn't matter how many watts you're doing, like you'll just not catch them. So you can see again, like Visma, there's just people pulling out of lines. Lotto is scrambling as well. And the guy in, in the white, I believe, she could be a GW, I believe it's an Italian kind of team. What their name is, no one knows because they change about every single year. And Marco Brenner, again, in this corner, like he just puts maybe not a second, I reckon half a second on these corners. And it just makes it enough. You can see we're still pretty high up. That's where the finish down is. Uh, three and a half K to go. So it's also like when you look here, it's a pretty rubbish road service. There's a lot of potholes. So Marco Brenner really is taking big risk here. I guess he doesn't have much to lose in terms of like, he's probably not going to crash. Uh, and this energy, it's like, it's going to be hard on the wheels. So it's not like if he's going for the GC, he's going to burn all his energy. Again, you can see here, like going across a lot of cracks, quite a late entrance, uh, and then really just pushing out as far as he can. Big acceleration out the corners. Visma's still trying to chase this back. And you can see behind there's actually loads of gaps. No one I don't think crashes. I think despite it looking like the road's wet, I guess it must just be dry because no one stacked it, which you'd expect. Again, around this hairpin, looking just very, very wide, as wide as he can go. Full sprint outside. And now Visma is still leaning on this guy in white. And he's just obviously not going to close this down. 2.8k to go. It still doesn't look like a major stress because you think... You know, a couple strong lead out riders, it'll be okay. But I think Brenner just keeps realizing that he's got more to go because every corner it seems like he's taking a little bit quicker than everyone else, and that really helps because suddenly the gaps are now you're like, Oh, that's actually a decent gap, like that's a couple seconds. And people are looking around, and this would do a decent job of trying to close this down, like they're not hesitating that much to be fair. But even so, Brenner, I think, just yeah, has so much confidence in the corners compared to everyone else, taking big risk. And like there, just again, tape to tape, that thing is actually bananas having a sign at the end and exit of a corner. And he just seems to really thrive all this. And now it's just Watts. He's obviously very strong. Uh, I think I made a video before saying how he has really, really good numbers when he signed. And it's not surprising, but he obviously didn't do that well at DSM. Maybe not, not exactly uh, the DSM mold, but at Tudor, he seems to be going a lot better. He tried something similar. I think it was in Provence as well earlier in the season. And you can see here, like now he's got a decent kind of gap. He gets the semi draft of the motorbikes in front. And although they're actually decently far at this point, there'll be parts where they're closer. And it just does help, like, especially if you're going on this downhill 60, 70k an hour. Like, even a motorbike that's only a little bit in front of you, it does definitely help quite, 
quite significantly. And also the technical nature of this run in again, it's hard to swap off people around the corner. He may, might gain half a second. And that really, really does help Brenner a lot. Again, gap here, not full crazy. And this is why it's more than just a downhill attack. It's not like a, oh, I just took a big risk on the downhill and gained it. It's like, no, I took a big risk on the downhill. Now it's just pure gas. And the Visma guy is riding full and he can't close it. And that's the thing is like Brenner's obviously got a brain in terms of realizing, okay, if I attack here, I can probably get a gap on the downhill, which he does, but it's also just pure gas. And like, he looks pretty arrows. Shifters are tilted pretty far in. I believe those BMCs have 36 centimeter handlebars, which is pretty nice. Uh, so he can get a nice aero aggressive position on the hoods. But out of every corner, again, full sprint. And this is basically it. Now we've got 800 meters to go. And at this point, I reckon the gap's only three or four seconds, maybe less. And I think he's just got far more gas than all the lead out riders. Because here, like he, in a bigger race where there's more strong lead out riders, he gets caught for sure. Because here they're like fanning across the road. What you can tell is if you look about five, six wheels back in the bunch, people are not cr going crazy. Some people are kind of freewheeling, which means obviously the speed's not high enough. Corotech, again, not really doing much of a lead out. Uh, it's a very chaotic sprint. You can see there's no official lead out. There's no dominant team. And Bren is just going absolutely full. I mean, he's not in the most crazy era position, but if you push big watts like he does, easy win. Like, they're not close. They are leading up the sprint and barely gaining on him. Like, you just showed huge... Huge courage on the downhill to take to take the win, really, and then enough gas just to back it up. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one. Questi 15, 20 metri, siamo a 50 metri dall'arrivo ancora a una ventina di metri. Qui capisce che può avercela fatta e mi sembra che Matteo Maluccelli abbia vinto la volata del gruppo con anche un gesto di disappunto. Marco Brenner quindi è la prima maglia di